Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Baka. This is Mori Medad Yahoo bin Yashrael, and you have just tuned in to Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. We want to first of all say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Ms. Bakar family out there. Toda for joining us, and Toda for all of your prayers, support, and we just appreciative because we know that without your prayers and support, None of this would even be possible. So we're going to um, embark on a, a lesson. And we'll see how many parts the Father gives us. So, you know, just stay tuned, hold tight, and we'll see how the Father leads us on this. But he gave me the first part, and I was like, okay, because I didn't really at first understand why he sent me there instead of starting just you know in the beginning you know where the first word occurs for worship but we'll get into that if you wish to email us you can email us at info at living branch dot org and we are reaching out globally our witnessing website for restoring the Yahuwah's name and restoring Torah is yahuwah.co main website is living-branch.org and then our auxiliary site is hebrewfoundation.org and again you just have you just tuned into living branch hebrew assembly shabbat shalom to all of those that are logging on and i see i do see a um prayer requests out there and we would definitely make sure um, it says hey please pray please I need your help to pray for me to open my heart and my mind to accept the truth hallelujah we will definitely um, send that prayer up for you and we we definitely want the Father to open hearts and minds. And a part of opening heart and mind is when you hear the truth, you know, and you see the witnesses to accept it for what it is. So we're believing the Father to do some wonderful things because only he can show himself to be who he is. Um, and he will reveal himself in your life. You just have to tune your ears and focus your eyes to see him. He'll be right there. Hallelujah. So, let's uh, pray. Baruch Atah, Yahuwah Elohim, Malachi, Father, thank you for another Shabbat. Thank you for your people. Thank you, Father, for even someone asking that you would open their heart and their mind to accept the truth. Father, you're the one that changes hearts and minds. I pray that you give Alex the things that she need to show her and to demonstrate your power and the power in your commandments that you have handed out to us from the beginning of time. I thank you, Father, for these instructions. I thank you, Father, for all that you have given us. Thank you, Father, for the witnesses that you have shown us down through the years. Now, Father, as we continue to restore your name and restore your commandments, we pray that you reach out to others, that their hearts might be touched and their minds might be touched and that they, Father, will accept this truth, embrace this truth, and live this truth most of all. Toda, Father, for all of those that are turning to your instructions, your Torah. Toda, Father, thank you for all that you do. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Halel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Ms. Baka. Today's lesson is worship part one, lost, 
just like the tribes. Worship part one lost just like the tribes. Now, let me just set this up. Many, uh, quite a number of us, not all of us, came from some type of worship background. You know, in church, some might have, some might not have. I know I did. They, you know, when I was in uh, the church for umpteen hundred years, they, you know, stress worship, especially in the Pentecostal churches and the um, various non denominational churches I was involved with. They stress worship and the open of your heart and mind. So we're going to get a perspective on this because true worship, and we haven't even, you know, we're not even going to cover that part, comes when his truth and his ruach is in place. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Because remember the ruach or the spirit, the ruach hokadesh or the set apart spirit, um, the, the church will call it the Holy Spirit, leads people to the truth of his scripture to his instructions, keeping the Sabbath day or the Shabbat, keeping his feast, feast days, showing you how to treat him, how to treat others, and showing you how to have righteous judgment. So, and giving you instructions on how to carry out judgment, because a lot of people talk about, don't judge me, don't judge me. But judgment was a part of Israel, but there was such a thing as righteous judgment, which the father was the leading source on doing that. So if someone were to steal something from you, the righteous judgment was they had to restore that which they stole and plus give a fifth part in addition to what they stole. So let's, um, let's, get into the lesson and see where the father takes us now let's just talk about worship just for a second okay worship in in the hebrew shaha 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 okay to depress or prostrate now notice in homage to royalty or alahim now it's made up of three letters we have a shin, we have a chet, and we have a hay. So the shin, picturegraphically, is teeth. The chet is the inner room of fence. And then the hay is a man with his hands raised. Okay, so when we put this together, when we think about worship, consume, reveal, inner room. Or consume, reveal, fence. Um, I like consume, reveal in a room because worship we're going to see is a place when when you because it's not just in the uh, prostrating of the body. That's a part that can be a part of it, but it's also prostrating of your being, humbling yourself. Being knowing that you will be or are in the presence of all. Okay, now consuming. Think about this. Deuteronomy 4:24. For Yahuwah thy Allahim is a consuming fire, even a jealous ale. He's a consuming fire. So when you get in his presence, consume, reveal in a room so you're no longer on the outside but you're in an inner room his presence you've entered into where it was fenced off not everybody can enter in not everybody can go there because certain things just can't dwell in his presence now, I'll give you the first place that um, this word shacha was first used. Genesis chapter 18, 
verse 2 of Bereshit chapter 18 verse 2 and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed or he shaha himself to the ground now this is when Abraham had the had Yahuwah meet him and he realized that he was in the presence of now notice it talks up here about jealous L so when you see Yahuwah here on earth in any type form it's L but that's a whole different lesson it's the Mashiach so what is the father's what does the father want to do he wants to dwell among his people so that means to dwell among his people certain things have to be in place for his presence to be there 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 can be no sin that has to be atoned for. So let's let's um, move it along a little bit here. Now what we're going to read. It's going to be 2nd Chronicles. I put 1st Chronicles. That's a typo. It's 2nd Chronicles. The 6th and 7th chapter. Now I want you to take a couple of notes. I want you to take note. Um, with the feast day. This occurs. That it occurs doing. Okay, what feast day is it happening during? And I want you to also note uh, what happens when Yahuwah's presence is there. Okay, so let's go over here and do some reading. We're in 2 Chronicles, the 6th chapter in the first verse. Okay, this is Shlomo, as Solomon has built a temple. He has built a place for the Father to put his name in his presence. So we're going to walk this out. And what I want you to be looking for is when it happens, what season, what feast day, as we're reading, and also what happens when the Father presence come in, comes in. Okay, and notice, I want you to notice that there's prayer involved in this too so it's not just prostrating but you're going to see some prayer involved in here too okay it says I'll make it just a little bit bigger just so you can see and then Shlomo or Solomon then said Shlomo Yahuwah has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness but I have built a an house of habitation for thee a place for thy dwelling forever and the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Yashriel and all the congregation of Yashriel stood and he said blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Israel or Yashriel, who hath with his hand fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth unto my father Daud or David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build an house in that my name might be there neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel or Yashriel but I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there so where did he say he chose he said he tro chose Yerusha La in. That is where he chose that his name might dwell. That my name might be there 
and have chosen Daud or Dawid to be over my people Yashriel. Now it was in the heart of Daud or Dawid, my father, to build an house for the name of Yahuwah Alahim of Yashriel. But Yahuwah said unto Dawid, or Daud, my father, for as much as it was in thy heart to build an house for my name, thou doest well in that it was in thy heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son. So I want you to notice the um some correlation here that Dao didn't build the house but his son built the house so picture this as Elohim and Mashiach what did Mashiach say in the 14th chapter of Yehukanan or John he said I go to prepare a place that where I am, there you may be also. In my father's house are many mansions. So he's preparing a place for us. Just like here, you're seeing the father didn't, but the son prepared a place for the father's name. But thy son which cometh forth out of thy loins, and he shall build the house for my name. And Yahuwah therefore has performed his word which he has spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David, or uh, excuse me, David or Daud, my father, and am set on the throne of Yashrael as Yahuwah promised. And have built the house for the name. See, many people discount his name. They say, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. We can call him whatever. No, 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 no. If you're riding down the road and you're looking at mailboxes. And the mailboxes, they don't just put any name. They put what their name of the people that dwell, that family that dwells in that house. So they don't just go write any arbitrary name. They put who's dwelling in that house. So the name over this house was Yahuwah. That's the name that was over this house. There wasn't any other name. It had to be the Elohim or the mighty ones that were part of that family. <laughs> And in it have I put the ark, wherein the covenant of Yahuwah that he made with the children of Israel. So this was the covenant that was made. Okay, let's go on. And he stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the congregation of Yashriel and spread forth his hands. Okay, I, I want you to take note of this. For Solomon had made a brazen basin, a scaphoid, of five cubits long and of five cubits broad and three cubits high. And had set it in the midst of the court, and upon it he stood and knelt down. Upon his knees before all the congregation, and spread forth his hands toward heaven or Shamaim. And this is this is what he said. And said, O Yahuwah Alahim of Yashriel. See, there is no there's none other but him. The nation, not the nation as you see it today, 
but the the nation of Israel that was scattered to the four corners of the earth. There is no Elohim like thee in the in the heaven nor in the earth which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts okay here's a key here's a key thing we want his presence but we've got to walk before him with all of our hearts see this prayer is kind of bringing out some things that are key in worship and we'll see when his presence come what happens which thou hast kept with thy servant David or Dawid or Dawood depending on whether you want uh, <laughs> which modern ancient whichever your preference my father which has promised which has, thou has promised him and spake with thy mouth and has fulfilled it with thy hand as in this day now therefore of O Yahuwah Elohim of Yashrael keep with thy servant Daud my father that which thou has promised him saying there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Yashrael, yet so that thy children take heed to their way to walk in my law. So part of this worship is walking in his statutes and commandments as thou has walked before me. Now then, O Yahuwah, Alahim of Yashrael. You notice it didn't say of the nations. It keep talking about a particular nation. Yashrael, Israel. Let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant Daud. But will Alahim in very deed dwell with men? On the earth, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee. So there's an acknowledgement before before his presence come who we are. And when I say who we are, that Yahuwah is so big, he's so mighty that he, he spans everything. That the heavens of heaven now Shlomo or Solomon was the wisest man that lived according to scripture so he, he came to the conclusion that heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you how, how much less this house that I'm building so what's missing for, from a lot of us is just how mighty how magnificent Yahuwah is how terrible and when I say terrible I don't mean in a bad sense I mean just his awesomeness just spans everywhere we, we're, we're so finite that we can't conceive this so often we don't have the fear that we should of the father we, we just come to him any old kind of way you know, we, we approach him when he told us that he wanted us to be set apart. He told us that he wanted us to make a difference between clean and unclean. And this goes for, uh, you know, a whole lot of areas. 
when you start reading about what you eat, foods can make you unclean. So do you think anything unclean is going to dwell in his sight? So we've got to be, we've got to find that line and understand what really being set apart is all about. Okay, let's keep on going. That the eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people, Yashrael, which they shall make towards this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from Shamaim of heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath is laid upon him to make him swear, and the oath come before thy altar in this house, then hear thou from Shamaim of heaven, and do and judge thy servant by requiting the evil, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Now you all remember what righteousness is. Righteousness is when we, uh, our righteousness is when we observe to keep his commandments. And if thy people, Yashrael, be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee. Here's an important clue. Sometimes if when you sin, he'll put you before the enemy to punish because you have sinned because sin carries with it penalties and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house then hear thou from Shammim or heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Yashrael and hear them again unto the land and bring them again into the land which thou givest to them and to thy and their fathers so he's already kind of sensing what's going to happen and when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee yet if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, then thou dost afflict them. Then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sins of thy servants and of thy people, Yashrael, when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they should walk. Send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be hunger, dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, if there be blasting, mildew, locusts, uh, caterpillars, if their enemy besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people, Yashrael, when they, when every one shall know his own sore, his own grief, shall spread forth his hands in this house. Then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou only knowest the heart of the children of men that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways so long as thy live in the land which thou givest unto our fathers. Moreover concerning the stranger 
which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake and thy mighty hand and thy stretched out arm. Oh, now Solomon now, Shlomo is talking about the stranger that comes for thy name's sake and because of thy mighty hand or mighty works and thy stretched out arm. If they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from Shamaim, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all the people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee as does the people of Yashriel, and may know that this house which I build is called by thy name. Now, notice you're seeing this is a fulfillment you see in uh, Yeshayahu where it says his house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. So here is mentioned the stranger. So we got to be careful who we try to lock out because we don't know who the father has included. So I just, you know, on, on subjects, I try not to add to or subtract from, but, you know, some think they got this thing cornered, but everything I'm reading in scripture says, hey, it's up to him and not us. Now it goes on. If thy people go out to war against their enemy by the way that thou should send them, and they pray unto thee towards this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear thou from Shamaim of heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. And if sin if they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies and they be carried and carry them away captive unto a land far off or near yet if now listen to this because this kind of you know when you listen to this it kind of sounds like our scenario yet if they be thought or return themselves to the land whether they are carried um, whether they are carried captive and turn and pray unto the land of their captivity saying we have sinned we have done amiss we have dealt wickedly if they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity whether they are carried them captive and pray towards their land which thou givest unto their fathers and towards the city which thou cho hast chosen and towards the house which thou which I have built for thy name then hear thou from Shama, the Shamaim Hashamaim even from thy dwelling place their prayer and their supplication Maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my Elohim, let I beseech thee thy eyes be open and let thy ears be attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Yahuwah Elohim, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priests, O Yahuwah Elohim, be clothed with salvation. Let the saints, or the set apart ones, rejoice in gladness. O Yahuwah Elohim, turn not away the face of thy anointed. Remember the, mir the miracles of Daud, thy servant. So this is the prayer we've got to institute prayer 
in our lives again. Prayer and worship, you're going to see, gonna go, they're going to go hand in hand. Now, after this prayer, it says, Now when Shlomo may, had made an end of praying, the fire came down from Shamaim and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the esteem of Yahuwah filled the house by eat. And the priest, the Kohen, could not enter into the house of Yahuwah because of the esteem of Yahuwah had filled Yahuwah's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down in the esteem of Yahuwah upon uh, in the esteem of Yahuwah upon the house, they bowed themselves there with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped. Shacha. So you see the presence of fire. You see a, a consuming. You see a behold or reveal. And what else do you see? What else? You, I'm, I'm just asking you because I want you to be interactive. And you see an inner room or fence. Because it's not just every place. It's not every place. It's in a central location. So let's keep reading. We'll, we'll talk more about this in a second. And praised Yada Yahuwah saying, For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. So I want you to say this with me. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, you can make a song out of that. Hadar, you can, that's, that's a song right there. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahuwah. And King Slomo offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all his people dedicated the house of Elohim and the priest waited or stood Ahmad in their office and the Levites also with instruments of music of Yahuwah which now notice this which Dau the king had made to praise Yahuwah because his mercy endureth forever. When Dau praised by his ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all of Israel Ahmad stood. Moreover, Shlomo hollowed the middle of the court. That was before the house of Elohim, for there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offering because of the brazen altar which Shlomo had made was not able to receive the burnt offering and the meat offering and the fat offering. Also, at the same time, Shlomo, now notice this, kept the feast seven days. And all of Israel with him and a very great congregation from the entering of in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt of Mitzrayim. In the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. So 
What feast has an eighth day in it? It's only one. That would be the feast of Sukkot or the feast of tabernacles. The last great day is the eighth day. So notice here the typology that you're seeing. Yahuwah dwelt with them doing the tabernacle. Isn't that what he ultimately wants to do? Is doing this feast. Now this feast is yet to be fulfilled. But we have a picture here of what it's going to be like when he dwells among his people. The priests not, weren't even able to minister. All the people bowed down and worshipped and praised Yahuwah. So what I can't figure out for the life of me is how someone thinks that they're going to make it into this kingdom, but yet and still they have no worship in their life. Interesting. So worship is definitely something. Getting in his getting in his presence. That we've got to do. Being consumed. Beholding. Getting to that inner room. That place. Where he abides. Where you feel his presence. You know he's there. I've had dreams where I've. Woke up and I was like, oh, he was here. I could, I just know it. Because there, there was such an awe there. Okay, let's keep reading. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. For that's what you're supposed to do. And they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. And on the third and twentieth, day of the seventh month he sent the people away into their tents glad and merry in heart for the goodness that Yahuwah had showed unto Daud and to Shlomo and to Israel his people thus Shlomo finished the house of Yahuwah Elohim excuse me of Yahuwah and the king's house and all that came into Shlomo's heart to make in the house of Yahuwah in his own house, he pros prosperously effected. So, Miss Bukal, what what are we getting at? Okay, certain elements you see before you saw the presence of the Father. There there has to be an air of righteousness, not self righteousness, not you saying I'm this, I'm that. But an air of righteousness that that is, uh, you know, that our filth, our righteousness is as filthy rags. That it requires him for us to sustain, to do. And without him giving us these righteous, these wonderful commandments and statutes and precepts and judgments that we would not be able to execute. So we take no credit in the fact. So there's a um, there's an air of humbleness that's about us. And trust me, when there's pride, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. The father knows pride. He, he even hates a proud look. Go back and read in Proverbs 6, 6 chapter. So we have got to prepare our temple because now we're the temple. We've got to be that living sacrifice before him. And we're going to walk all this out. This is just like an intro um, because we just want to sh show you Notice that he talked about the tribes being scattered and how if they prayed towards the place and asked for forgiveness, the father would do it. Now, if we go on down, I just want to read a little bit more and, and we'll, we'll um, conclude. Okay, 
notice now not only did the presence show up at the temple now the presence shows up to Shlomo and Yahuwah appeared to Shlomo by night now this is one of the reasons when in his later years when he sinned and, and started worshipping other deities that the father was so angry with him because he said he appeared to him twice and if you keep reading and you go and keep reading what happened to him this is why he was upset now when you get this the father's presence and him appearing to you and him showing himself you can't go out here and just do what you want to. You got to stay set apart. And contrary to popular belief, because people use it to um, use it in a way that is not supposed to use. He didn't sin because he had many wives. He sinned because he had strange wives. The strange wives drew his heart away. To other mighty ones and that's what caused him to be displeasing in the sight of Yahuwah he made all these alliances with um, other nations and took strange wives from them. and those wives he built altars even when we went to Israel you can and we went to where Shlomo and Solomon had his palace in Lachish we made a big you know, a long climb up a, uh, it wasn't a hill, it was bigger than the hills. Pretty good walk up. And then you could see the altar where he sacrificed unto the queen of heaven. So he definitely messed up. So when you start feeling this, the father's presence and this worship starts really coming back in your life through song. And through, uh, because notice that there, there, there were uh, instruments from Daoud there. And there's praise and worship um, there. And just esteeming Yahuwah and you start to feel his presence. You can't go out here and just, because that's when the enemy is going to come at you the hardest. Because he doesn't want you to get in the Father's presence. Oh yes, that's true. He's fighting some of us real hard because he don't want us there. Now let's let's read this. Finish reading this. I'll start from the beginning again. And you who appeared to Shlomo by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, or Shamin, that there be no rain. Now, this is what Solomon had prayed about. And if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among the people, all of us know this one. If my people, which are called by my name, there's an actual name that his people are called by. There's a name out there on my mailbox. Now notice what it says, shall humble Kanah submit humble themselves and pray. Paul. I told you you can't get away from prayer. This this is you're gonna see this stuff mixed in. And seek my face. Panim, Panim, and turn up, see here's the catch right here, to turn from their wicked ways. Shub. So if you're turning from your wicked ways, you got to go and pick up some ways. You got to take up his ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place. 
For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou will walk, notice this is a conditional state, will walk, wilt walk before me as Dawid or Daud thy father walk and do according to all that I have commanded and shall observe my statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with Dawid or Dawud or Dawi uh, thy father saying there shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and commandments which I have set before you and shall go and serve other mighty ones and worship them notice what he gonna do then would I pluck them up by the root out of my land which I have given them and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb or a byword among the nations and this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it so that he s shall say why has Yahuwah done thus unto this land and unto this house and it shall be answered because they forsook Yahuwah Elohim of their fathers which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other mighty ones and worshiped them and served them. Therefore has he brought all this evil upon them. So in this worship series, Miss Bacab, we got a lot before us because we've we've got to reconstruct our temple. So that our temples are presentable where we can house his name and it's a place of sacrifice because we are a living sacrifice now. So that means even in the sacrificial system, you couldn't just bring any old thing to the father. You couldn't bring that which was lame, that which was uh, had a defect, you, that which was broken. You had to bring the first, firstling, and you had to bring the best. So we have to ask ourselves, are we bringing the first and are we bringing the best or are we just bringing whatever we you know whatever we grab up so we're going to start to delve into this this is just more or less to prepare us but if we bring our best and we bring that which is acceptable then there's a fire, there's a consuming fire, a presence that will dwell in your life. People will see it, people will know it, people will observe it. They won't, they won't look at the things that you have because things are not always good evidence that you're blessed because the wicked have things too. But there's a presence from the Father, there's a standard of living that people will observe in you because these commandments, statutes, and precepts, precepts, this word will give you a certain wisdom among the nations that people will have to acknowledge where did he get this wisdom from? And 
And furthermore, it's not a, a wisdom of hate. So for us, this worship series is going to be a journey. Today, we just tipped the iceberg. We haven't even chipped away even a little piece. So I need you, Miss Bacar, to be praying for me so that I can put this these these lessons together according to how the Father wants us to receive them. What's going to help people to get back what was lost, just like the lost tribes worship? How can we do it and be in line with Scripture and know that we are restoring what's righteous in our lives and not doing, you know, crazy stuff like you might see out in the world. So I really need your prayers. Uh, I always tell the Father, I can't do this without you. So I'm, I'm soliciting you for the prayers for the Father to give me the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, memory, and counsel that I need so I can put this stuff together. Because I realize that it's far more than, than me as an average man can take. But with his Ruach HaKadosh leading, then we can accomplish this and we can use this to help others. Now, what I want to do, I want you to, I want to try to cover what you're dealing with in your worship time. So I, I need the pros, I need the cons, I want your experiences. Um, I'm not saying uh, whether I'll share them or not. I won't share your name unless you want me to, but I want to be able to uh, share the experiences that you're going through out there because everyone is experiencing different things. And if I get a cross section, this will help me in my lesson to kind of hone in on what's going to help us. But for the most part, we're, we're going to hone, we're going to hone in what's going to help the great majority, but there might be some specific areas that we might touch on. So need your prayers, Miss Bacall. You know, I'm going to be praying for you. And when you send that email to me, send it at info at living branch.org. Make the subject line my worship experience. And we're going to go from there. We're going to believe the Father to um, open up some things for us and help us to see. Okay. Um, if you haven't already joined our bookmark and witnessing team, go to www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org. And join us in our team on our team volunteering to uh, pass out bookmarkers. Um, we ship them out. We don't charge anything. Those that want to donate can. Now, if you would like, because all of this is possible because of giving. Um, bookmarkers, us being on um, here on live stream, and the things we do. It's all because of people that gener uh, generously donate. So if you like to donate by, by PayPal, here's our PayPal address. Just go to HebrewFoundation.org. You can also mail your donations. In, but if you would like to use the online giving tool, you can do that. Uh, we have Quick Give. We have First Time Givers. Now, the Quick Give is designed for debit cards and credit cards. If you want to give by bank account, you have to log in and register. And there is what now if you want to make your donations automatic, you can do that too. But you in order to do that, you have to register. And there is a place um, that has automatic reoccurring donations so that you don't have to come to the system every time. You can just set dates and the system will automatically know to pull it. All right, Ms. Bacar, this has been the first part, worship part one, lost just like the tribes. So continue to pray. We're going to put these together 
and give you a framework to be able to establish worship. If you haven't, some of us have already have, but to establish worship in uh, our lives once again. So let's pray, Ms. Bakar. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malak HaAlam. Father, we thank you for this lesson. I pray, Father, that you give us all the succession of lessons that we need to cause us to understand and see and know worship. And that you show us through scripture how to worship. How to worship before you. Reestablish it in us according to scripture. Now, Father, we barack your name and we say toda for all of those that joined us here on live stream. Father, we we just say Shabbat Shalom to them once again. And we barack them, Father, that you would continue to be the first in their lives and give them direction. Someone's in need of direction, Father. They got some major decisions coming up this week. I pray that you send them a witness to show them what they need to do. They're, they've been stumped. They don't know how to handle it. But I know through your wisdom, Father, you know. Cause them to seek your face. Then send them the wit witnesses that they need. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. Told our Father, for all that you do, we barack you. And we say thank you. Told our Rabbah in the name of Shiach Yahusha. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Ms. Bukah. This is Moray Medad Yahoo saying to you, Shabbat Shalom.